today I'm going to be going over all the notes that we have so far for global history. Since we have the first regents exams coming up, I'm going to be making a sequel to this once we finish with all the material, which knowing Mr. Ormond will probably be the last day of school. But anyway, I'm going to be going up to the rise of Nazis in um, World War II. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So describe absolutism. Monarchical rulers in Europe had complete authority over the functions of government. Name two absolutist rulers in Spain, Charles V and Philip II. What dynasty did they rule in Spain and the Holy Roman Empire? Habsburg dynasty. Describe Charles V in Spain. He was a grandson of Ferdinand and Isabella. He ruled both in Spain and in the Holy Roman Empire. Describe Philip II. He was a divine right ruler in the Golden Age of Spain. What battle did Philip II lose? The Spanish Armada. Name three absolutist rulers in France. Henry V, Louis XIII, and Louis XIV. What dynasty did they rule? The Bourbon dynasty. Who was Louis XIII's advisor? Cardinal Richelieu. Describe the Edict of Nantes. Um, it ended religious conflict in France by letting Protestants worship freely. Describe an accomplishment of Henry IV and Louis XIII. He expanded the king's power over nobles by creating an heir, a strong army and bureaucracy. Describe Louis XIV. So he was known as the Sun King. He built his palace of Versailles and he expanded France with wars. Describe the intendant's system. It was a system that introduced by Cardinal Richelieu under Louis XIII replacing local officials with intendants who reported directly to the king. Name two absolutist rulers in Russia. Ivan the Terrible and Peter the Great. Describe Ivan the Terrible. He became a Tsar and overthrew the Mongols. Describe Peter the Great. He westernized and modernized Russia and created an empire. What dynasty did they rule? The Romanov dynasty. Describe the Tudor monarchs. He they ruled as absolute monarchs by respecting and negotiating with Parliament. D name two Tudor monarchs, Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. Name the first two Stuart monarchs, James I and Charles I. Describe them. So they were Catholic, they claimed divine right, and they abolished Parliament. Who competed in the English Civil War? Cavaliers, who were monarchists versus roundheads who were Puritans that supported Parliament. Who led the Puritans to victory? Oliver Cromwell. What did Oliver Cromwell do to keep power? He executed Charles I. What governments did Oliver Cromwell establish? The English Commonwealth. Describe the English Commonwealth. It was a Republican form of government with Cromwell at the head. He became a dictator and ruled harshly. What happened in the Restoration? Parliament invited the Stuart family back. Charles II and James II returned to absolutism and Roman Catholicism. What was the Glorious Revolution? A bloodless coup d'etat of James II. Who assumed the throne in the Glorious Revolution? William and Mary of the Netherlands. What dynasty were they? Hanoverian dynasty. Describe the accomplishments of William and, Mar and Mary of the Netherlands. So they signed the English Bill of Rights, which created a limited monarchy and habeas corpus, which was due process rights. Describe the scientific revolution. New technology and improved methods of research led to an explosion of knowledge. Describe five causes of the scientific revolution. One, medieval universities helped spread education. Two. Rebirth of learning during the Renaissance used a, created a questioning spirit. Development of technology was needed for exploration, and they finally got that technology, so yeah. Um, four, Protestant denominations had increased toleration towards scientific research. Five, the development of the modern scientific method, which involves experiments and observation. Reason is used to interpret results of experiments, and mathematical formulas were used to prove scientific theories. Describe theological reasoning. So it stressed obedience to authority and acceptance of the existing order of things. Describe scientific reasoning. So it emphasized 
deduction, logic, and experimentation. Traditional authority was no longer enough to prove the truth of proposition. Describe Copernicus. So he developed the heliocentric theory, and he created questions about religious explanations. Describe the heliocentric theory. The sun is the center of the universe, not the earth. Describe Kepler. So he said that in a sun-centered universe, planets must observe na certain natural laws. Kepler laid the foundation for modern astronomy. Describe Galileo. So he improved the sun, sorry, he improved the telescope and produced evidence to support the claims of Copernicus. The Catholic Church tried him for heresy and forced him to recant his views. Describe Newton. So he developed the laws of gravity through mathematical formulas, and his work helped develop a new view of the universe, that it was huge but well regulated by natural laws. Describe the results of the scientific revolution. So one, science and traditional religion are now seen by some as incompatible. Two, the scientific method began to replace reliance on established authority. Three, the scientific revolution made possible the Industrial Revolution in Europe two decades later. Four, it assured that Western Europeans' domination over other cultures. And describe the Enlightenment. So it was an intellectual movement in the 1600s and 1700s, which began a search for natural laws that governed man's existence. They challenged traditional authority and encouraged the improvement of society through the use of reason. Describe the writers of the Enlightenment. So they applied the scientific method of observation and investigation to the problems within society. Name two ideas proposed by Enlightenment thinkers. Democracy and laissez-faire capitalism. What is democracy? Rule by the people. What is laissez-faire capitalism? An economic system in which the government has little control. Who came up with laissez-faire capitalism? Adam Smith. What book did Adam Smith write? Wealth of Nations. Describe the points in the Wealth of Nations. So, free enterprise, profit motivation, and laws of supply and demand. So that's what capitalism should have. Describe mercantilism. So it's an economic policy by Colbert, who was the chief financial minister for Louis XIV. The country's wealth should benefit the state, aka the king. The government should assist the economy in developing roads, canals, fort port facilities, the navy, etc. And colonies exist to benefit the mother country. The colony provides cheap natural resources and acts as a closed market for goods. So basically it's the opposite of laissez-faire capitalism. Name four leaders of the Enlightenment. John Locke, Voltaire, Rousseau, and Montesquieu. Describe John Locke. He declared that all people have, have natural rights to life, liberty, and property and people consented for the government to rule. It wasn't just something that you had to accept, you actually need permission for someone to rule. So what did John Locke write? Two treatises on government. Describe Voltaire. So he believed in a limited democracy and the freedoms of speech, press, and religion. What did Voltaire write? He wrote letters on the English, because he was French. Describe R Rousseau. So he believed the government should be based on the will of the majority while protecting the rights of the minority. What did Rousseau write? The social contract. What was the social contract? The idea that people agreed to let the king rule properly and the people could break the contract through rebellion. Describe Montesquieu. So he believed that the government should be separated into three different branches. Judicial, executive, and legislative. What did Montesquieu write? The spirit of laws. Describe the characteristics of the Enlightenment. So faith and hope in the use of human reason and the scientific revolution. Confidence that civilization would continue to improve. Politics and business further distanced themselves from religion. As, religious, as religion became less important, religious minorities can be tolerated. And the rise of liberalism puts absolutism on the defensive. And the rise of the Enlightenment despots in Eastern Europe. Name and locate four Enlightenment despots. So Catherine the Great of Prussia, Frederick the Great of Prussia, Maria Theresa of Austria, and Joseph II of Austria. Describe the causes of the French Revolution. So there's the arbitrary nature of the king, not brutality, which is the fact that he didn't really have a right to have so much power, not that he was misusing it necessarily. 
So there's also the success of previous revolutions, the influ influence of the Enlightenment, privileges of the aristocracy, confidence of the bourgeoisie, or the middle class of France, restrictive mercantilist laws, and financial difficulty of the king, and hardship of the French peasantry. What happened in the first stage of the French Revolution? So a financial crisis forced Louis the 16th to tax the nobles and clergy. Louis called the states general to get their approval. So the states general wanted to control the government expenditures in return for being taxed. Louis rejected their bargain and disbanded the meeting. Describe the second stage of the French Revolution. So in the tennis court oath, representatives met in the, tennis, in the tennis court and vowed not to disband until they wrote a constitution for France. The National Assembly then replaced the States General, and Louis agreed to work with the group. Louis then fired Neckers, who was very popular among the people, and that led to the storming of the Bastille, and which ended the, the Ancien Regime. Describe the Great Fear. So Louis and his family were brought to Paris, and reforms like the abolition of noble privileges, declaration of the right of man, and freedom of religion. Describe the third stage of the French Revolution. So the Constitution of, 19, sorry, of 1791 was made, which created a limited monarchy with a unicameral legislative body. It, divided, it was divided into radicals, moderates, and conservatives, like today, except we don't have moderates. <laughs> um, so Louis agreed to rule by the Constitution. He did so reluctantly, to say the least. And then Austria invaded France to restore Louis to power and end the revolution. Then the nobles immigrated immigrated as violence grew, and they were known as emigres, and then Louis and his family attempted to flee France because they didn't actually want to rule constitutionally. So who led the radicals in France? Robespierre. What did the radical, what were the radicals called? The Jacobins. Describe the fourth stage of the French Revolution. So the Jacobins seized power of the legislative body and established a national convention to govern France and executed Louis XVI. Then they executed the reign of terror. What were the two goals of the Jacobins? End the foreign threat and create stability at home using commu a committee of public safety. Describe the reign of terror. So royalists were executed and arrested. Marie Antoinette was executed as a traitor, as was anyone who opposed the revolution. Military draft was adopted to defeat foreign invasions and Robespierre himself was eventually executed, and that's what ended the reign of terror. Describe the fifth stage of the revolution. So moderates regained power in France and replaced the Committee of Public Safety with a five-member governing body. They were weak, corrupt, and broke, and the directory was dependent upon the army to maintain control. Describe the sixth stage. Um, so in the sixth stage, uh, Napoleon overthrew the Directory in a coup d'etat and established a military dictatorship. What were Napoleon's achievements? So he reorganized the finances of France, developed an education system, and developed the Napoleonic Code, which said that there should be equality for all men. Describe Napoleon's foreign policy. So he created an empire in Central Europe. He ended feudalism in the nations he conquered. He enacted the Continental System, which is basically like a boycott, and that failed. And there was a fateful invasion of Russia by the scorched earth tactic. And he was exiled to the island of Elba, but then after that he was briefly restored for like 100 days. And then he was permanently exiled um, after he lost the Battle of Waterloo, and then he was exiled to St. Helena. Describe the results of the French Revolution. So that limited monarchy replaced absolutism, in France at least, nationalism, which we can talk about later, uh, feudalism ended in territories that Napoleon conquered, the Napoleonic Code became the basis of France's legal system, and revolutionary ideas spread, and, um, and further efforts for liberty, equality, and fraternity, and Europe turned to a conservative political philosophy for the following decades. Who led the Congress of Vienna? Clemens von Metternich. Describe the three principles that found in the meeting. Legitimacy, which is meaning you restore the, the monarchical families. 
reparations, which means you repay the aristocracy, and balance of power. So this idea of balance of power is seen in the concept of Europe, which is the idea that the, the, the powerful states of Europe informally should work together to maintain a balance of power. That was a good definition of my part. So describe the main causes of Latin American revolutions from 1800 to 1830. Social inequality, influence of the Enlightenment, Napoleon's conquests, and American and French revolutions. Describe the strict social class system in Latin America. So I should show you a picture of this soon. So at the top of the pyramid are the peninsulares, and those are Europeans, usually Spanish and Portuguese, and that um, Portuguese and people then that moved to Latin America. So I go from Spain to Latin America. I immigrated there, so that makes me a, pen a peninsulares in that situation. So then below the peninsulares are the Criollos, who are right white people who were born in Latin America, their problem was that they wanted to govern and they weren't allowed to. Then there's the mestizos and mulattoes, which I didn't think was okay to say, but anyway. Um, so mestizos are Native American and European, and mulattoes were African and European. And both of these people wanted to govern, wait, not wanted to govern, they wanted social equality. I should rewrite that. They wanted social equality. And then there at the bottom of the pyramid are the Africans and Native Americans. The Africans wanted their freedom, and the Native Americans wanted their land, their land back. Describe the influence of the Enlightenment. So most Criollos were educated in Europe, and they were influenced by philosophers who believed in ideas like democracy and stuff. So describe Napoleon's conquests and how they caused the revolution. King Ferdinand of Spain was replaced by Napoleon's brother. Therefore, colonists had no loyalty to Spain. So they'd be cool with breaking away. Describe the status of Haiti in the early 1800s. So it was a French colony with 500,000 enslaved Africans. Name two nationalist leaders in Haiti. Toussaint El Overtour and Desalines. Describe the accomplishments of Toussaint El Overtour. So he led 100,000 in a revolt, and the French troops put down the rebellion and captured Toussaint. Describe the accomplishments of Desalines. So he continued the revolt and won independence for Haiti in 1804. What modern countries were in Spain's vice royalty of New Granada? So Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, Bolivia, and Panama. Who led independence movement in New Granada? Simone Bolivar, the liberator. What did Bolivar want the former vice royalty to be united into? Grand Colombia. What did Bolivar accomplish? So he led a volunteer army through the Andes Mountains to defeat the Spanish army in 1811. What modern countries made up the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata? Argentina, Peru, and Chile. Name two nationalist leaders in Rio de la Plata. Jose de San Martin and Renando O'Higgins. What did they accomplish? So they led an army through the Andes to defeat the Spanish army, all three nationalist leaders, and, um, and led their forces in Ecuador and defeated the remaining Spanish army at the Battle of Ayacucho in Peru. So name three nationalist leaders in Mexico. Padre Miguel Hidalgo, Padre Jose Morelos, and Agustin de Iturbide. Describe the steps of Mexican independence. So first, Padre Miguel Hidalgo led peasants' revolt in Dolores, Mexico, which is known as the Grito de Dolores. And he defeated, was defeated by the Flinsulares and Criollos. Second, Padre Jose Morelos led um, a more organized revolution in southern Mexico for four years. The Peninsulares and Criollos, led by Iturbide, put down the revolt. Third, Agustin de Iturbide, a Criollo general, rebelled against Spain because the liberals seized power, and he didn't want that. Describe the steps of the Brazilian independence. So King John the Sixth led Portugal in eight, fled Portugal in 1807 with Napoleon's conquests and set up court in Brazil. In 1815, John returned to Portugal after Napoleon's defeat and left Dom Pedro to rule Brazil. Then Dom Pedro declared independence of Brazil. So this was pretty peaceful. Describe the social problems in Latin America post-independence. 
So there's a Peonage system which created an unequal distribution of land, and Criollos owned haciendas and peons were tied to the land. Then there is a strict social class structure. The Criollos had all the political, economic, and social privilege. Describe political problems in Latin America post-independence. So regionalism due to geography prevented unity, and Hacendados held political power. There's a lack of democratic experience. Um, there's a power struggle with cuadillos and oligarchies, and there's a triangle of power. Describe the triangle of power. So there's the cuadillos at the top, and cuadillos were like dictators. And then there was the hacendados right below them, who also had some power. They were the large plantation owners. And then there's the Roman Catholic Church, which was at the bottom, which also had a lot of power too. So it's not so much like, oh, boohoo, you're at the bottom of the pyramid. Like, these are the people who are corrupting the government, basically. Describe economic problems in Latin America post-independence. So they had a cash crop economy, which was profitable for the hacendados, but it was bad for the overall economy. And then they had to import food as well. And home markets were flooded with imported goods, which prevented home industries from developing. There was a lack of industrialization, which prevented growth of the middle class. And foreign investment to build port and rail facilities led to these facilities being seized by foreigners when the debts weren't paid. Name the Mexican presidents in order. Santa Ana, Benito Juarez, Archduke Maximilian, Juarez again, Porfirio Diaz, Francisco Madero, Victoriano Huerta, Vestiniano Carranza, Emiliano Zapata, Alvaro Obregón, and the Institutional Revolutionary Party. So describe Santa Ana. So he ruled four times from 1820s to 1840s. Describe Benito Juarez. So he was Zapotec Indian. He led La Reforma, which means the reform. You should know that. Um, his slogan was Liberty, Order, Progress. And he redistributed land, separated the church and state, and provided public education. Describe Archduke Maximilian, and how did he get power? So he got power when the Criollos asked France for help to overthrow the liberal Juarez government. Describe Porfirio Diaz. So to, he was a totalitarian dictator who used terror tactics to oppress opposition. He stabilized the economy and provided order, but there is still disparity in land and wealth that existed. So describe Francisco Madero. So he was a Criollo who wanted, sorry, who led the revolution against Diaz, and he was murdered soon after he was elected. So describe Victoriano Huerta. So he was overthrown within 15 months. He didn't do much. Describe Nistiano Garanza. So he allied with Pancho Villa and um, Emiliano Zapata to overthrow Huerta. Then he turned against both of them and he st started to create a moderate constitution for Mexico once he got power. And he was overthrown by his general, because you get what you paid for, it's a bit of karma. Uh, anyway, he was overthrown by his general, who is Alvaro Obregón. Describe Alvaro Obregón. So he overthrew Carranza, and he promoted Mexican nationalism and the constitution. And he, like everyone else, was assassinated. List five examples of the United States getting involved in Latin America. So there's the Monroe Doctrine, Mexico, Texas Succession, slash Mexican-American War, the Spanish-American War in Cuba, the Panama Canal, and the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. Describe the Monroe Doctrine. So it was written by John Quincy Adams, adopted by James Monroe, and he forbidden new or recolonization of Latin America by Europeans. And it was supported by England because they wanted to keep nations open to trade. Because at that time, the Spanish were the ones who were mostly colonizing, and England wasn't colonizing Latin America. So you can't trade with those countries if they're being colonized by Spain. So that's why England supported it. Basically, there's no colonization of the Americas anymore. So describe what happened in the, Mexis, Mexi, in the Mexican Texas Succession and the Mexican American War. So many Americans immigrated to Mexico. The Americans who got to Mexico then wanted to succeed from Mexico. Oh, wait, wait, never mind what I just said. The Many Americans immigrated to Texas, which was part of Mexico. So it wasn't just like, I mean, it was Mexico, but it was 
Texas and Mexico. So then these Americans wanted to succeed from Mexico, so they wanted to take Mexico away from Mexico. They wanted to take Texas away from Mexico. Then the United States and Mexico fought over Texas in the Spanish-American War, and then the Southwest was conquered from Mexico. So basically, Texas left Mexico, went to the United States. So describe the Spanish-American War. So Cuba led a revolt from Spain. As a result, Spain forced Cubans to live in concentration camps, and they were treated harshly. The United States joined in defense of Cuba after the sinking of the USS Maine, which was dramatized in the case of yellow journalism, aka fake news. Then the United States beat Spain in the Spanish-American War. Then Cuba gave the United States Guantanamo Bay in appreciation for their assistance. So then the USS Maine, uh, sorry, then the United States made the Platt Amendment, which basically gave a bunch of things that Cuba had to promise to do if they wanted to stay independent, which was kind of not expected, but anyway. So describe the Panama Canal. So Panama wanted to separate from Colombia, and the United States wanted to build a canal on Panama. So Colombia refused to let the United States build a, pan build a canal in Panama, and then the United States supported a re revolution in Panama because if Panama broke away, then they'd be able to build a canal. So more ka for the United States. So then Panama and the US, United States won, so Teddy Roosevelt got to build the canal. Describe the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. So it made the United States a policing power in Latin America. Today, sorry, Teddy Roosevelt said the United States had a right to intervene in Latin America when the United States' economic stage was involved. What is nationalism? A strong devotion to one's country or region that develops within a group of people who share things in common. What is self-determination? The idea that people have a right to join together to form their own national government. What is chauvinism? Extreme feelings of superiority that fosters intolerance and prejudice. Describe jingoism. Extreme nationalism that can lead to persecution through discrimination, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. Describe nationalism in Greece. So, Greece was part of the Muslim Ottoman Empire, and the Greeks then won independence in the Battle of Navarino, and they combined the British, French, and Russian nukes, sorry, Russian navies to defeat the Ottoman Navy. Then, describe the influence of nationalism in Belgium. So, Belgium revolted against the Netherlands and won independence. Describe nationalism in Poland. So, Poland was ruled by Russia. They rebelled, but were crushed by Russia. Describe Hungary. So they were ruled by Austria. The revolt was, read, was led by Louis Kossuth, and it failed. But it did mean the separation of those two states. So it meant the separation of Austria and Hungary into separate states. Describe nationalism of the Czechs. So it was ruled by Austria. The revolt failed, but forced Metternich to resign. Describe Charles X of France. So he tried to reestablish an absolute monarchy in France, using, which led to riots forcing him to flee to England. Describe Louis Philippe. So he succeeded Charles. He was liberal and popular among the middle class, and he was overthrown by radicals. Who overthrew Louis Philippe? Clementine and blank. Describe Louis, sorry, de describe Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. So he was the nephew to Napoleon. He won the presidential election. He was a moderate and he declared himself emperor and brought instability. List the general causes of Russian instability in the 19th century. Failure to modernize, conflicts, political disunity, and nationalism. Describe Russia's failure to modernize. <clears throat> so it was still feudal and absolute, it was not industrial, and reform efforts had failed. Describe an example of reform efforts failing. So Alexander II tried to end feudalism and he did, but he created more problems because the serfs and the government owed money to the nobles who, whose land they paid for. Describe one Russian conflict. Uh, there is a Crimean War, and Russia failed to capture large portions of the Balkans from the Ottoman Empire. Their loss of the Crimean War symbolized its pol political and economic institutions were outdated. Describe one example of political disunity in Russia 1825. So there is the December's Revolution. 
It was a dispute over succession of Alexander um, the first between his sons, moderate brothers Constantine and reactionary Nicholas the first. What is Russification? So that's the policy of suppressing indigenous cultures and promoting Russian culture. List general reasons for the decline of the Ottoman Empire. Disunity, welfare, sorry, warfare, not welfare, <laughs> warfare, failure to modernize, and nationalism. Describe disunity in the Ottoman Empire. So never highly centralized due to its size, and the Sultan relied on provincial rulers to govern. Why did the Ottoman Empire fail to modernize? So Muslim leaders, like most traditional religious leaders, were opposed to change of modern ideas, and the church and state were combined. Name three examples of the Ottoman warfare. So Greek independence, they had a revolution to fight with that, Crimean War, and the Russo-Turkish War. Describe some examples of nationalism other than, sorry, in the Ottoman Empire. So people sought self-determination, and the government oppressed people, leading to the Armenian Genocide. Describe the impact of nationalism on Austria-Hungary. So Emperor Franz Joseph was forced to divide the empire into two separate states. What did Austria lose in the Austro-Prussian War? They lost uh, the German provinces and Italian provinces to Sardinia. List causes of unification of Italy. So there's Napoleon's conquest, Austrian influence, nationalism, and for an example, they went to gain the glory of the Ottoman Empire. Name three nationalist leaders in Italy. So there is Mazzini, who was the heart of unification, Count Camillo de Cavour, who was the brains of unification, and Garibaldi, who was the sword of unification. Describe the accomplishments of Mazzini. So he organized Young Italy, and he wrote about unification. Describe Count Camillo de Cavour. So he was a prime minister of Sardinia under King Vector Emmanuel II, and he made Sardinia the strongest city, and Italians looked to Sardinia to lead unification. So he made Sardinia really a power state. Describe Garibaldi. So he formed the red shirts in the kingdom of two Sicilies. Describe the steps of Italian unification. So first, Cavour allied with France and provoked war with Austria. He gained Savoy, Lombardy, Modena, and Tuscany. So then, Garibaldi overthrew the government in two Sicilies and united with Cavour. Then, Venetia was acquired from Austria. Then, the Papal States in Rome were acquired by Sardinia. Name four leaders of German unification. So there was Otto von Bismarck, who was the brains of unification, Kaiser Wilhelm I, Johann Fitch, who was the heart of unification, and Helmuth von Moltke, who was the sword of unification. Describe Otto von Bismarck. So he's the brains of unification. He was a prime minister of Prussia. He was a junker, which is a member of an elite noble warrior class. And he was, his policy of, his strategy for politics was realpolitik and blood and iron. So describe realpolitik. So it's the politics of reality. You follow policies of the nation's best interest. Uh, you use power diplomacy and you are a realist instead of an idealist. Describe blood and iron. So Bismarck used the army and diplomacy to attain goals. Describe Kaiser Wilhelm I. So he was a king of Prussia. Describe Johann Fitcht. So he was the heart of unification, which is ironic because he was kind of racist. And he wrote about unification. And he introduced the pure race theory. So we can see how there's already some anti-Semitism in, in Germany before what we are learning about now started. So describe the Helm describe Helmut von Moltke. So he was the sword of unification, and he created a dominant modern Prussian army. Describe the steps of German unification. So Prussia allied with Austria to declare war on Denmark, and he gained Cheswig. Then Austria and Prussia go to war over Holstein. Prussia dominates all northern provinces, and that was the first time that Prussia had been united and it was called the German Confederation. So all those Germanic states that were connected were known as the Germanic Confederation. It's German Confederation. So then there's the Franco-Prussian War, 
and Prussia convinced the Southern Catholic provinces to join the Confederation for protection from France. France was defeated badly and lost Alsace and Lorraine to Prussia. Name two nationalist groups in India. Indian National Congress and the Muslim League. What was the Amritsar Massacre? So that was when the British slaughtered many Indians for peacefully protesting. What was the Sepoy Rebellion? So that was when Indian soldiers for the British rebelled. What is Zionism? So that's Jewish movement to acquire a nation in Canaan, aka Palestine or Israel. What was Zionism, sorry, as, what was Zionism developed as a response to? Anti-Semitism in Europe. Who founded Zionism? Theodore Herzl. Why were the Balkans called the powder keg of Europe? Because they were, there were many conflicts and land disputes in the region due to nationalism. What country controlled the Balkans? The Ottoman Empire. What countries wanted land from the Balkans? Russia, France, and Austria. What modern countries in the Balkans gained independence in the 1800s? Greece, Montenegro, Serbia, Romania, and Bulgaria. What is Pan-Slavism? The desire to unite to a common Slavic nation. What were the Young Turks? So they were a nationalist group in the Ottoman Empire that sought to create a modern, powerful nation in Turkey. Who was the first to rule Turkey after World War I and modernize Turkey? So he was, his name was Kemal Mustafa Ataturk. Describe the Industrial Revolution. So it was a peaceful revolution which changed the manner in which goods were produced and influenced the cultural, political, and economic development of the world. It lists the basic causes of the Industrial Revolution in Britain. The Agrarian Revolution, cheap labor, geographic advantage, labor supply um, was there. There is modern infrastructure, advanced commercial skills, expansive empire, and mercantilism. Describe the Agrarian Revolution. So they improved farming methods and increased food production. Name some new technology of the Agrarian Revolution. The seed drill by Jethro Tull, fertilizers and irrigation systems, enclosure movements, and crop rotation. What were the impacts of enclosure movements? So they created larger farms and higher crop yields, and they forced peasants to move to the city since all the land that they were farming was stolen by the nobles. So what is crop rotation? So that was annually switching from soil draining crops to root crops. So one day I plant, sorry, one year I plant carrots, next year I plant strawberries, like that. So describe the geographic advantages of England. So it was an island nation with, ir with an irregular coastline which provided natural harbors. It had rich deposits of coal for energy and iron for building material and had navigable rivers, which were a source of energy and transport of goods and resources. So why did England have a cheap labor society, supply? Why did England have a cheap labor supply? So enclosure movements forced peasants to towns in search of work for cheap. Describe Britain's modern infrastructure. So it was well-developed roads and canals, efficient postal service, and strong navy to protect, um, to protect them from pirating. So, Describe Britain's advanced commercial skills. The commercial revolution created financial inst and market institutions such as banks and insurance, etc. Then there was excess capital left merchant class available to invest in technology. And then there are also entrepreneurs. What are entrepreneurs? Those are individuals who take risks and invest in, organize and manage new businesses. How did England um, begin, and how did England being an empire help? Like, why was it helpful that they were an empire? So it was a source of inexpensive raw materials from their colonies. How was mercantilism helpful? So it provided an available market to sell excess goods. Let the textile inventions of the Industrial Revolution in order. The flying shuttle, spinning jenny, water frame, spinning mule, power loom, and cotton gin. Who invented the flying shuttle? John Kay. Who was, sorry, what was the flying shuttle? A machine that weaves textiles at twice the pace. Who invented the spinning jenny? James Hargraves. 
what did the spinning jenny do? It allowed spinners to keep up with the increased pace of weaving. Who invented the water frame? Richard Artwright. What did the water frame do? It operated the flying shuttle and spinning jenny by water. Who invented the spinning mule? Samuel Crompton. What did the spinning mule do? Combine the spinning jenny and water frame to make stronger thread. Who invented the power loom? E Owen Cartwright. What did the power loom do? It in influ increased the pace of weaving. Who invented the cotton gin? Eli Whitney. What did the cotton gin do? Increased pr cotton production by separating seeds from cotton. Describe the results of textile improvements. So, there's a better quality materials produced at a cheaper rate to increase demand for textile goods, which led to an increase in workforce. Larger machines force production to be moved from homes to factories. So basically, the factory system replaced the domestic system. Then, each new invention spurred another invention to complement it. List four transportation improvements of the Industrial Revolution. The steam engine, steam boat, roads, and locomotive. Who invented the steam engine? James Watt. What did the steam engine do? It harnessed energy from water stream. Who invented the steam boat? Robert Fulton. What did the steam boat do? So it decreased the time needed for water transport. Who invented modern roads? John Macdum. How did the roads improve? Large Stones under the surface improved drainage. Who invented the locomotive? Um, that was Richard Trevithick. What did the locomotive do? It revolutionized land transportation. Because it drove you places. Describe the results of transportation improvements. So goods were transported less expensively. And goods could reach further markets, increasing demand for agricultural and finished goods and new jobs created in a new area, such as coal mines and laying tracks. Who invented the wheat reaper? Cyrus McCormick. Who invented the telegraph? Samuel Morse. Who invented the foot-operated sewing machine? I am Singer. Who invented the radio? Guglielmo Morconi. Who invented the telephone? Alexander Graham Bell. Who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison. Who invented the assembly line? Henry Ford. Well, when was the first stage of the Industrial Revolution? 1750 to 1850. Where did the first stage of the Industrial Revolution take place? England, part of northern United States, Ruhr Valley, Germany, Bohemia, Moscow, and St. Petersburg in Russia. So when was the second stage of the Industrial Revolution? From 1850 to 18 to 1950, 1850, 1950. Where did the Industrial Revolution take place in the second stage? So the United States, Japan, and continental Europe. What were some barriers to industrialization prior to 1850? Germany suffered from political disunity. France was dealing with the French Revolution. Spain and Austria-Hungary were had mountains that were barriers to transportation, especially. So, describe the results of the Industrial Revolution. So, the factory system replaced the domestic system, changing working conditions, growth of the middle class, change of lifestyles, urbanization, imperialism, competing social philosophies, Europe surpassed other regions in political and economic wealth. What were some characteristics of laissez-faire capitalism? A market economy, free enterprise and private ownership, and it was profit-oriented. Describe a market economy. So economic decisions are made by individuals, producers, and consumers, and they're based upon the law of supply and demand. Name two contributors slash proponents of, cap of capitalism. Adam Smith and Thomas Malthus. What did Adam Smith write? We should remember this for our last question. Uh, wealth of Nations. Describe Adam Smith. So he's an enlightened philosopher. And he said that without government involvement in the economy, producers would make what people want, and consumers would buy what they want, and social economy, social, sorry, social harmony would be reached. We can see how great this is working out.
What did Thomas Malthus write? An essay on the principle of population. What did Malthus say slash believe? So he believed that the excess population was destined to be poor. What did Malthusian theory say? There will always be an impoverished class. Describe socialism. So the government should actively plan the economy, control the factors of production for the benefit of all. Name two thinkers of utilitarianism. Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Sorry, that's my sister. She's a little kid. Uh, what did Bentham believe? He believed that people should judge products of a society based on their usefulness. Usefulness, not usefulness. Uh, then government's role is to produce, sorry, promote the greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. What did John Stuart Mill believe? So he believed that workers should not leave deprived lives in the process of producing wealth. And he said that the government should distribute the wealth. Name one thinker of utopianism. Robert Owen. What did Owen believe? That people should create self-sufficient communities where all factors are shared. Name two places that Owen founded. New Lanark and New Harmony, Indiana. And he owned a factory and provided for his workers. So that's what he did in those two places. Name two Marxist thinkers, Karl Marx and Friedrich en Engels. Name two things that Marx wrote. Marx wrote. <laughs> Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital. What was Das Kapital? A series of books that Marx wrote, Marx wrote about his view of history and plan for society. What did Marx believe about history? It's a constant struggle between warring classes over means of production, aka, for example, you can see the patrician versus the plebeian, the lord versus the serf, the bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, etc. And it's also the manipulation of the lower class whose labor produces a means of wealth for the upper class but sees no benefit. So like, I'm a factory worker, I work all day, all night, I get nothing and the big business gets all of it. That's basically history in a nutshell. So what According to Das Kapital, I should say. So what does the surplus value theory say? So the price of the product minus the cost of labor equals your surplus value. What are three stages of the Marxist revolution? Revolution of the proletariat, dictatorship of the proletariat, and pure communism. Describe the revolution of the proletariat. So factories would drive out all artisans out of business, and only a few capitalists would control all the wealth. So basically now, except we have Etsy. Uh, the proletariat would revolt against this and seize all factors of production. Describe the dictatorship of the proletariat. So the proletariat would seize the government and have two goals. Redistribute the wealth and resources and re-educate the population that was conditioned to private property and capitalism. Describe pure communism. All factors of production and wealth would be shared by all. Therefore, the government would not be needed and would dissipate. That doesn't happen. So describe the flaws of Marxism. So one is that he doesn't recognize that power is corrupting and absolute power is absolutely corrupting. Secondly, Marx says that the revolutions were taking place in urban industrialized societies. In reality, it happens in rural agrarian societies, such as in Vietnam. Um, and third, he dismissed the peasantry as too dispersed and tied to religion. Four, in his account of history, he doesn't account for the forces that have moved history such as religion and nationalism. Describe who founded social Darwinism. Charles Darwin, who was a British nationalist who believed that humans evolved through natural selection. What was, the, what was social Darwinism applied in, sorry, how was social Darwinism applied to politics and economics? So capitalists applied this scientific theory to social class, claiming that the less able humans fail to succeed. So if you're poor, it's because you didn't evolve as well as the rich people, basically. List some of the forms developed as a result of the Industrial Revolution. The Union Movement, Democracy, Abolition, Prison Reforms, and Collective Bargaining. What is Imperialism? A foreign policy in which a dominant nation influences a weaker nation politically, economically, and or socially. When did old imperialism take place? 1500 to 1700. Where did old imperialism? Where did old imperialism take place? France, England, Portugal, Spain, and they, those places imperialized North and South America, East African city-states, and Indonesia. What was old imperialism preceded by? The commercial revolution. 
when did new imperialism take place? 1850 to 1914. Where did new imperialism take place? England, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, the United States, Russia, and Japan imperialized Africa and Asia. What was new imperialism preceded by? The Industrial Revolution. How did nationalism cause imperialism? There is competition for political dominance in Europe because more land equals more power. Describe how the military caused imperialism. Port facilities were needed around the world to refuel modern ships. Describe an economic cause of imperialism. There was a need for new products, new markets, I mean, and raw materials. So list some social causes of imperialism. The missionary movement, ethnocentrism and racism, and social Darwinism. How did the missionary movement cause imperialism? So missionaries took over so that they could spread Christianity. So like, say some French dude decides he's going to go over to Africa somewhere and preach to all the heathens. That's just a joke. Just a joke. That was, that's like an example of an ethnocentric worldview that someone used. So you go over, spread Christianity, and you try to change people's way of life. Describe the impact of ethnocentrism and racism. So you had a duty to civilize, quote unquote, quote unquote, lesser people. Again, I hope that this doesn't come off as really offensive. Like this is, that's how ethnocentrism caused it. So describe the impact of social Darwinism. So if Europeans didn't dominate, they risked being dominated. That's something that you kind of get from the theory of evolution. So name one example of Darwinist, of a social Darwinist. And this person, as a hint, is a writer. So there was Rudyard Kipling. What poem did Kipling write? He wrote, White Man's Burden. List some physical causes of imperialism. Transportation improvements, weaponry, and medicine. What is a colony? When one society completely annexes another society. What is a protectorate also known as? A satellite nation or a puppet nation. Describe a protectorate. An indigenous government remains, but is subject to the stronger nation's influence. What is an example of a protectorate? Um, an Eastern European nations during the Cold War. Describe concession. So a weaker society grants a stronger society a specific economic right. What are some examples of a concession? So Egypt gave oil to English companies, and Hawaii gave pineapples to the Dole Fruit Company. As we can see, both of them kind of led to annexation, which is not good. So describe a sphere of influence. So a weaker society grants a broad economic rights to a stronger society. What is an example of a sphere of influence? So China to Germany, England, and France. What is a mandate? So a temporary control. What is an example of a mandate? The Philippines, the United States. Describe direct control. So it's paternalistic control. It provides for the needs but denies all rights. It's governed by colonials at all levels. And the people who are governed are pretty much viewed as children. What are some examples of direct control? The Congo and Belgium, Angola and Portugal, um, sorry, the Congo by Belgium, Angola by Portugal, and Tanzania by Germany, and Indochina by France. Describe indirect control. So that's rule through local government with daily administration, and unwittingly you cultivate good indigenous leaders. What are some examples of indirect control? India and Canada to England. Name two explorers who got lost and then colonized an area in, in Africa, which we, I'll tell you where the place later is. So David Livingston and Henry Stanley. What king did they inform of their discoveries? King Leopold of Belgium. Where did he colonize? The Congo. What conference was held by Europeans in order to control the scramble for Africa? The Berlin Conference. What two countries were the only ones not imperialized by 1914? Ethiopia and Liberia. What, which political leader protected Ethiopia from imperialism? King Menelik. Name one political so social reason why the Berlin Conference was a failure, besides the fact that no one from these colonized areas was invited. So they had no regard for traditional ethnic boundaries. Which Europeans first settled in South Africa? The Dutch Boers. Which Europeans later settled? 
English. What is it called when the English force the Boers to migrate north into the Zulu territories? The Great Trek. What did the Boers discover in the new land that they found? Transvaal, orange gold, and diamonds. What did this lead to? The Boer War. What do you call segregation in South Africa that lasted until the 90s? Apartheid. Name two leaders that ended apartheid in South Africa. Nelson Mandela and Bishop Desmond Tutu. Where were native people in South Africa forced to live? In homelands. What was it called when the native Africans were restricted to homelands unless they were working? The past system. List some issues in South Africa post-independence. Instability with the police state gone, poverty, economic inequality, and AIDS proliferation. Where was Egypt so, sorry, where was Egypt originally part of, like what nation? The Ottoman Empire. What governor of Egypt broke away from Ottoman rule? Muhammad Ali, not the fighter. Um, who modernized Egypt and built the Suez Canal? Ismail. What led to the colonization of Egypt? Egypt sold the Suez Canal to England. What two colonies wanted to imperialize Persia and why? So Russia wanted access to the Indian Ocean and England wanted a buffer to India. How did Persia respond to their requests? So they granted concessions to both and they established spheres of influence. What used to limit imperialism in India but kind of made it happen when it dissolved? So the Mughal Dynasty. What started imperialism in India? So, new trade routes reopened trade with China in the 1500s. What built trading posts, what company built trading posts along the Indian coast and eventually governed it, India? The English East India Company. Who led to the colonization of India? Robert Clive. What battle did he win? The Battle of Plassey. How did he win the battle? So, with the help of a Sepoy army. Why was India called the crown jewel of England? Because it had valuable textiles and a vast market for goods. Why was India willing to buy English goods? Because the home industries were banned, so they had no other option. What world events increased demand for textiles in, in England? So the Crimean War cut off supply of Russian jute, and the US Civil War cut off supply of American cotton. Name a rebellion by Indian soldiers of the British Army. The Sepoy Rebellion. What did, why did the Sepoy Rebellion take place? The Indians were forced to move to other areas, and the English used animal fat to grease the cannons, which offended both Muslims and Hindus. What happened as a result of the Sepoy Rebellion? England seized control of India from the East, from the East India Company. Who was the father of modern India? Ram Muham Roy. What are some of Roy's hopes for India? that Indians would modernize and abandon traditional culture to compete against the English. And he wanted an end to widow suicide, the caste system, and child marriages. Name an event when 1,200 Indians were wounded after peacefully protesting against England. The Amritsar Rebellion. Name two nationalist groups in India. The Indian National Congress and the Muslim League. Why did Europeans imperialize Southeast Asia? because they wanted raw materials and a location that was close to China. What did England imperialize? Burma and Singapore. Where did France influence? Indochina, which is Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Where did Germany influence? New Guinea, Marshall Island, and Solomon Island. Where did the Dutch influence? Indonesia. What Southeast Asian country was never subjected to imperialism? Siam, which is modern day Thailand. Why did Thailand become independent? Kings Mongkut and Chalilongkorn modernized Siam and remained independent. What ethnicity was the Qing Dynasty? Manchurian. When did the Qing Dynasty rule China? From the 1700s to 1912. Describe the economy in the Qing Dynasty. It was self-sufficient, there was a strong agriculture, and diverse production of natural resources. Describe the balance of trade in the Qing Dynasty. It was favorable, and China scorned European products, and trade with Europe was limited. You sold more than you got. What than you bought? <laughs> what started the Opium War? So England had to pay for Chinese goods and silver because the Chinese did not want European goods. 
thus draining the treasury of silver in England. So English decided that they still wanted to get these Chinese goods, so they got money by um, smuggling in opium into China to create a demand for the drug, and they sold drugs instead of silver. So by 1835, 12 million Chinese were addicted. How did China react to England smuggling drugs? So China seized English warehouses and ships full of opium and burned them um, during the war. So I think that was pretty justified. I would have done the same thing if I were them. So how did England react to their ships being seized? So they defeated China using steamships and modern cannons. China was then forced to sign the Treaty of Nanjing, which was pretty unequal. What did the Treaty of Nanjing mandate? Like, what happened as a result of the treaty? So, it gave England the city of Hong Kong. China then had to pay reparations to England. The English were granted rights of extraterritoriality, and China opened other ports to trade, which I think was kind of, the whole thing was unfair. Um, what does extraterritoriality mean? So, if an English person committed a crime in China, they would be tried in English courts, not in Chinese. This was because English did not trust or respect China's judicial system. What was caused by, sorry, what caused the Taiping Rebellion? Massive overpopulation and corruption. Who led the Taiping Rebellion? Hong Xiaoquan. What happened as a result of the Taiping Rebellion? 20 to 40 million died, the government weakened, and farms were destroyed. How did other nations react to China's concessions? They sought their own treaties with China, starting spheres of influence. What group led the Boxer Rebellion? The Society of Harmonious Fists. Describe the Boxer Rebellion. Peasants protested social inequality and foreign influence in China, and they attempted to expel Europeans. Who started American influence in Japan? U.S. Commodore Matthew Perry. What did he do? So he sailed to Tokyo Harbor with four steamships, and he requested the United States to have rights to trade and refuel in Japan. How did Japan react? So the shogun signed the Treaty of Kanagawa, opening two ports of trade and creating a U.S. embassy. How did other Western nations react? So they sought similar deals. What did Japan do in response to European imperialism? So they overthrew the shogun and restored the emperor and began modernization and industrialization to resist imperialism. And they, this whole thing is called the Meiji Restoration. What are some causes of the Meiji Restoration? So all of it was social dissatisfaction because the samurai were unhappy with the growing influence of merchants, the merchants were unhappy with the lack of power, uh, mer peasants were unhappy with the increased taxes, and everyone was unhappy with the treaty. What were some goals of the Meiji Restoration? Restore the emperor, expel foreigners, and modernize. What emperor did they restore? Matsuhito. What methods were used in the Meiji Restoration? Nationalism, industrialization, militarism, and imperialism. And diplomats were sent overseas to learn Western ways of life. Describe Japan's new government. So it was a constitutional monarchy modeled on Prussia. It had bicameral legislature with a prime minister and cabinet. Bureaucracy, which had power concentrated in the ministries of the military. Describe Japan's new economy. So it had modern infrastructure, see a bot sale, and it expanded silk and tea production to trade with the West. What is the Abatsu? Large family-owned state-funded corporations. Describe Japan's new society. So feudal classes were abolished and there is equality under the constitution. There's also a lot of urbanization and they blended the old with the new. Describe Japan's new foreign policy. So imperialism and there is Korea in the Sino-Japanese War of 1894 and Manchuria in the Japanese Russo War in 1904. List the political results of imperialism. So, uh, weakening of the central government, ruling family is often overthrown, the colonial boundaries are disregarded, disregard the tribal boundaries, and partition of the subcontinent into Muslim and Hindu nations. So we have India, which is mostly Hindus, and Pakistan, which is mostly Muslims. So, list some economic results of imperialism. Modern infrastructure was developed, home industries were banished, making people dependent on their mother country, and there's introduction of a moneyed economy and tra transition from growing cash crops. To growing cash crops, sorry. What are some social results of imperialism? 
Western ideas such as education and democracy were spread. I think that's kind of debatable. Um, thousands of people died in resistance. Lifespans increased as health improved. Introduction of new diseases such as smallpox. Loss of traditional culture. Strict social classes. Uh, systems where Europeans impress indigenous people. Indigenous ethnicity becomes a minority. And a massive cultural pluralism led to ethnic conflicts today. Name the central powers in World War I. Germany, Austria, Hungary, Turkey, and Bulgaria. List the Allied powers in World War I. England, France, Russia, United States in 1917, Italy in 1915, and 30 others. List the, list the main underlying causes of World War I. Nationalism, militarism, imperialism, and the alliance system. Describe how nationalism caused World War I. Nations wanted to be the strongest world power. People were so devoted to their nation that they followed it into war, and regions of the Balkans went to their independence. Describe how militarism caused World War I. Nations filled up their militaries out of fear and suspicion. Governments gave military officers leading roles in government. Nations believed that if diplomacy failed, war was a valid political tool. Describe how imperialism caused World War I. There's competition over colonies. For example, Morocco between Germany and France in 1905, and the Balkans between Austria and Russia. How did the alliance system cause World War I? So throughout the 1880s, Bismarck worked to isolate France by maintaining an alliance with Russia and Austria. By the 1890s, Europe had fallen into two armed camps. What countries were in the Triple Alliance? Germany, Austria, and Italy. What countries were in the Triple Entente? England, France, and Russia. List the immediate causes of World War I. So, first, Carvillo Princip assassinated Austrian Archduke Ferdinand. Second, Austria gains full support from Germany to address Serbia. Third, Austria gives an ultimatum to Serbia. Fourth, Austria steps, stops all anti-Austrian, sorry, Serbia stops all anti-Austrian rhetoric, but refuses to let Austria investigate. Five, Austria mobilizes for war on Serbia. Six, Russia mobilizes for war on Austria. Seven, Germany asks Russia to demobilize. Eight, Russia refuses to demobilize. Nine, Germany enacts a Slaven plan and invades France through Belgium, drawing England into the war, because England and Belgium are allies. Describe what was going on in the Western Front in France. It was a stalemate. The strategy of concentration of power was not suitable for modern warfare, and there was also trench warfare, and that led to there being no man's land between the two trenches. So list some new weapons of World War I. Poison gas, machine gun, barbed wire, landmines, home grenades, hand grenades I mean, submarines, airplanes, and tanks. Describe what was going on in the Eastern Front. Germany captured a great deal of Russian land. Russia had the largest but least effective army. Describe what's, what was going on in the Southern Fronts. So Italy and the Ottoman Empire were the Southern Fronts. In the Alps there was mountainous fighting and there is a campaign of Philippi. Describe what was happening on the home front. So there is total war, with the government powers increasing to ensure military success. There is propaganda, which is persuading the populace using emotions, and civil liberties were limited. List major events that happened towards the end of World War I. So Russian Revolution in 1917, the United States entered the war in 1917, and the German Revolution in 1918. What treaty ended Russia's part in World War I? Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Why did the U.S. enter World War I? The Zimmerman Telegram, the close social identity with England, economic ties, and unrestricted German U-boats. Who was overthrown in the German Revolution and what new government was established? Kaiser Wilhelm II was overthrown from the Weimar Republic. How did the German Revolution end World War I? So the new leader signed an armistice on um, on November 11, 1918. So that armistice ended their part of the war. What were the basic goals of Wilson's 14 points? Peace without rancor, League of Nations, disarmament, and self-determination. Name three main members of the League of Nations. Lloyd George, who is British, Clement Call, who is French, and Wilson from the United States. What were Lloyd George's and Clement Coe's goals for peace settlements. So they wanted to punish Germany 
and they went to demand reparations, and they went in an apology, which is why they wrote the war. List the results of World War One. So the end of Eastern European monarchies, Britain and France weakened, and Germany remained the strongest nation in Europe. The League of Nations was created, and it made collective security. Italy and Japan resented not being rewarded for their efforts. Germany resented loss of territory, reparations, and the War Guild Clause. The Treaty of Versailles laid the foundation for World War II. Governments raised taxes. The world trade declined. The United States became a world power. There was a lost generation. And living standards declined, which led to the Great Depression. Well, that was in the Great Depression. The Great Depression caused living standards to decline. So, describe some Eastern European monarchies that ended. So, in Germany, the Hohenzollerns were replaced by the Weimar Republic. In Austria, the Habsburgs were replaced by independent nations. In Russia, the Romanovs were replaced by the Communist Party. List some causes of the Russian Revolution. So, Russia could not support the war effort, and there was not enough agriculture and industry or communication systems for them to win. The soldiers deserted the army. There were poor living and working conditions for the lower classes. Russia suffered defeats by the Germans. Workers went on strike. Vast weaponry and food shortages. Middle class had no say in government. The unpopular German Tsarina Alexandra was in charge of the government in St. Petersburg because Tsar Nicholas was personally leading the army at the front. So she, he left her in charge, and she wasn't very good. Um, then there was Bloody Sunday in 1905 that kind of signaled what was going to happen, foreshadowed what was going to happen. So describe Karl Marx. So he was a German philosopher who wrote the Communist Manifesto. Describe Vladimir Lenin. So he was leader of the communists in Russia who became Russia's dictator from 1917 to 1924. Describe Joseph Stalin. He was a subordinate and a successor to Lenin, who became Russia's dictator from 1925 to 1953. Describe Tsar Nicholas II. So he was a king of Russia until 1917 when he was overthrown. He was absolutist and he was from the Romanov family. Describe the Bolsheviks. So that was a political party and they were the communists in Russia. Define capitalism. An economic system based upon the laws of supply and demand, private property, and free enterprise. Define Marxism, a.k.a. Communism, a.k.a. Bolshevism. So it's a political and economic system based on the ideas of Karl Marx. Descri define egalitarian. So there's equality within a society and no privileged class. What is surplus value? Profit business owners reap after paying for labor and cost. Define proletariat. The poor working class of cities. <clears throat> define to abdicate. You should probably know this if you speak English. So, to give up power or the throne. What is a Duma? So that's Russia's legislative body. What does it mean to nationalize? The government seizes control of all economic resources. What happened in the February Revolution? So, Tsar Nicholas was captured and forced to abdicate the throne. A provisional government was created by the middle class, and Russia stayed in the war against Germany. That's what made the new government very unpopular. Describe what happened in the October Revolution. The Bolsheviks, led by Lenin, seized power and Lenin became dictator of Russia. Peasants seized land, workers seized, seized, um, seized farms, sorry, seized factories, and Lenin became dictator of Russia. Peasants seized land, workers seized factories, <laughs> um, and the Cheka, aka secret police, were created. Who, sought the who fought the Russian Civil War? The Reds versus the Whites. What policies did Lenin... Oh yeah, and the Reds were the communists and the Whites were the anti-communists. You should know that. What, politi what policies did Lenin enact during the Civil War? War communism, the Red Terror, and new economic policy. What is war communism? When Lenin nationalized Russia. What's the Red Terror? So that's an attempt to oppress opposition through terror tactics. What was the new economic policy? So that's the partial reintroduction of capitalism to improve the economy. How did Stalin become
become dictator. So when Lenin died, Stalin defeated and later assassinated his rival Trotsky. So Trotsky was the right-hand man of Stalin. Stalin died, and and then um, wait, no, no, so, um, so Trotsky was the right-hand man of Lenin. Lenin died, and Stalin defeated Trotsky, so Trotsky got the power. Yeah. List the three policies of Stalin. Purges, five-year plans, and collectivism. Describe the, de, de, describe the purges. So four or five periods when Stalin executed and arrested anyone when, who Stalin perceived as an opponent. What were the five-year plans? Stalin's attempt to modernize and industrialize Russia by setting high production goals of iron, steel, coal, and oil. What was collectivism? When Stalin forced all the peasants into large state-owned farms and the government controlled production and profits, anyone who refused was arrested or executed. 14.5 million died. Who were the Kulaks? They were wealthy peasants who refused to give up their farmland. Stalin eliminated them through forced famine. What is totalitarianism? A political system where one group has complete control over the people. Civil and political rights are limited. List four principles of totalitarianism. So there's glorification of the community because the government promotes achievements of the regime and hides their issues. And secondly, there's rule by one or a few, so a dictatorship. Third, there's control of the individual's life using secret police, and there's no distinction between private and public life. So, four citizens exist to benefit the state. List three conditions of totalitarianism. The people were dissatisfied, those in power are weak, and the majority of the people do nothing to oppose dictatorial rule. Under whose rule did the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic, aka the USSR, um, Form. So when did the USSR form? Under Lenin. Where, besides Russia, did the USSR occupy under Lenin? The Ukraine and Belarus. What did you call Stalin's secret police? The KGB. Describe the causes of fascism in Italy. Um, the Great Depression after World War I, the government was ineffective to solve the nation's problems, polarization of politics, and people were dissatisfied um, after the loss of life in World War I. What group did Benito Mussolini form? The fascist political party, aka the Black Shirts. How did Stalin supposedly get control of the Italian government? I say supposedly because this is kind of a legend that Stalin... Stalin. Um, well, oh my god, I'm an idiot. What, how did... Mussolini, forget that I said Stalin, how did Mussolini supposedly get control of the Italian government? So he had the march on Rome and the king asked Mussolini to form a new government and then Mussolini became il duce and a limited opposition. This is really just a propaganda story because in reality the the ruler had the king had agreed for for um for Mussolini to rule a long time ago. He just kind of made up this story so it sounded like he did some brave thing when really he didn't. Anyway, that's what he says happened. So describe the economics and property in Mussolini's fascism. So private property was allowed but the government regulated the economy. List two major causes of Nazism in Germany. Failure of the Weimar Republic and appeal of the Nazis. How was the Weimar Republic a failure? So there's severe inflation and unemployment. Germany could not pay reparations, and France occupied the Ruhr Valley, which was uh, a big factory place in Germany, so that was important for their production. And um, the democratic government could not solve problems. Why were the Nazis appealing? Hitler blamed minority groups in the Treaty of Versailles for Germany's problems. Both of those things were unpopular, to say the least. And they called for rebuilding the army, expanding Germany's borders, and ignoring the Treaty of Versailles. So his policies were popular among some people, basically. And that's as far as we're going to get with this video. I'm going to be making a sequel once we finish with all our material. And yeah, I hope this helps you study.